She's a bit messy, I'm sorry. <laughs> Six months since retiring from pro cricket and Stuart Meeker's life couldn't be more different. The former England Surrey and Sussex bowler has just returned from a solo drive to Poland, delivering supplies to Ukrainian refugees. When it's so close to home and you're seeing the emotions of, of people uh, struggling, battling, giving birth in a war zone, you know, it's, it's, it's really quite touching and uh, I don't know many human beings that would have seen that and not felt like they wanted to do something. I was just in a position where I could actually do something for a change, you know, I didn't have to get ready for pre-season. So having appealed for supplies on social media, Mika loaded his van and headed to Dover to start an epic 24-hour solo journey across Europe. There was the usual nappies and baby food and uh, a few clothes here and there, but the, the bulk of what I did receive really was uh, full-on hospital medical equipment, you know, tourniquets and syringes and saline solutions. I even had uh, two uh, hospital bed hoists in the back of the van. Once in Poland, Mika's first stop was a distribution centre, from where supplies were then transferred to the Ukraine. That was quite quite humbling, but it was very organised. And actually, I subsequently found out that all the women that were um, volunteering in that were actually from Ukraine and had crossed over already. So it was quite poetic that they're sort of repackaging the aid and sending it back to their families and to their husbands that are staying behind in Ukraine. Mika then headed to the southern city of Shemeshul, helping refugees who'd fled war-torn Ukraine. That was a very different scene and a very different vibe. I think after that, it became really apparent exactly what people, when they're coming across the border, were going through. I stumbled upon a group of um, charity workers from you know, a charity called Love Bristol that took it upon themselves to start linking up the refugees with the, the host families back home because people who had signed up here weren't able to access that information or find the refugees and the refugees weren't able to access the, the hosts and who had already signed up back in the UK so they provided this little link but it became very very apparent how frustrating that whole process was uh, made to be. We had two women that were quite keen to move on and find safety and just speaking to them talking to them about the process of how long it would take to get their visas and having to cons console them because they were in tears and you know you, you feeling a bit helpless. I had to step out for a little while because I think I needed to gather a bit of my um, resolve and um, keep my emotions in check because that was quite hard. You, you're basically you've got these people who are pleading for your help and asking you know can you can you take me to safety and you're just having to sit there and turn around and say look we know that you've just fled a war-torn country and been bombed and shot at, but you're going to have to wait here for another two to three weeks to get a visa. So that was, that's something that stuck with me and the frustration of not really being able to help someone immediately. As you can see, it's just very much a, a tin can or when you're in Poland, a refrigerator as I like to call it. Um, so you slept in this? I slept in it all of one night and um, yeah, it was a bit of a mistake, to be honest with you. I think it got down to about minus 14, and it was so cold that my water bottle literally froze solid. So uh, I was very fortunate to stumble upon this uh, Love, Love Bristol group because I ended up sleeping with them on a, on a building site. From pre-season to Poland in less than six months, Mika is certainly embracing life after cricket. James Cole, Sky Sports.